Step 3. Clock synchronization. So we have seen in this module the applications of uh, uh, how we can use entanglement. We saw the example of teleportation and we saw the example of entanglement based QKD. Here in the remaining two steps of this lesson we will consider a few other uh, uh, examples of applying entanglement. And in here in step 3 we will look at clock synchronization. So before we say how we can synchronize clocks, let's ask the question why we want to synchronize clocks. Well, establishing universal time standard is fundamentally important in many areas of modern life. Tele the, uh, telecommunications networks require synchronized clocks, global positioning system, financial markets, transportation networks. These are all just a few examples of crucial importance to modern way of living. For example, if we look at the GPS, how it works, how it uh, calculates the exact pos the very accurate position uh, where we are, is it computes the distances to four uh, satellites and then from that it can locate with very high degree of accuracy where we are placed on Earth. And in order to calculate these distances, this R1, R2, R3 and R4, uh, accurate timing is very important because even tiny errors in, uh, in, uh, in timing can result in huge positional errors. So how can we synchronize clocks? Well, there are really two classical methods and one uh, quantum method which we will mention. The first one is due to Einstein. Imagine that we have two clocks. One is in possession of Alice and the other one is in possession of Bob. And they are trying to uh, um, synchronize. Alice is trying to synchronize uh, her clock with Bob's clock. So what she can do is she can uh, fire a um, pulse of light towards Bob. So the light is traveling to Bob and it reaches Bob. As soon as it reaches his clock, it bounces back. And as it's doing that, it sets the, uh, Bob's clock ticking. Alice is measuring the time that it takes for the photon, for the light pulse, to travel from her to Bob and bounce back. From that, she knows uh, she can estimate the distance to Bob, she can calculate the distance to Bob, and also she will know what's the round trip time and also what's the time in order uh, for the photon to reach from Bob to Alice. Therefore, she knows how she can set her clock. And this will synchronize the two clocks together. However, in this scheme, Alice needs to know where Bob is located in order to correctly synchronize their clocks. A different scheme is uh, to, for Alice to have some other smaller clock, which she synchronizes locally with her clock. And then the small clock is very slowly, in fact, adiabatically slowly uh, transferred to Bob where he receives the clock and then he can locally synchronize his clock with this received clock. And this scheme has to be done adiabatically slowly in order uh, because of a uh, theory of relativity. Now the third scheme is realizing that qubits can act as tiny uh, clocks. How does that work? Well qubits they evolved in time. For example if we prepare a qubit in an equal superposition of 0 and 1 we can make it uh, change its state in time such that it goes around this uh, uh, xy plane in the block sphere with angular frequency capital omega. So it starts, we can initialize it in the state plus and after some time capital T, which is the period of precession, it completes one full circle. So it goes around an angle of 2 pi radians. So the period of precession is given by 2 pi divided by the angular frequency of precession. So really in this sense it's, it's the same as a grandfather clock. If we can track how many times it goes around the xy plane, we can track time, knowing the, ang uh, the angular frequency of precession. So the question now is how can we synchronize two qubits? Let's say Alice has qubit 1 that is processing at a frequency uh, capital Omega and Bob also has one that's also processing at the same frequency but this time there is some offset so it's lagging behind Alice's uh, qubit clock so this uh, this uh, Delta is quantifying the lag between in terms of the angle between mm, uh, the point that's on the on the block sphere in the XY plane for Bob and for Alice. 
And what we are trying to do is we are trying to eliminate this uh, offset uh, delta in order for their clocks to be synchronized and show exactly the same time. So where is the main problem? Well, the problem is that Alice has her local time frame and Bob has his own local time frame. And somehow they need to communicate, like say, my time frame is this, what is your time frame? And they have to exchange messages in order to agree on a global time frame. In fact, what they can do is they can do that by sharing entangled pairs of qubits. They can use these qubits to establish a global, um, global time frame. So in that sense, entanglement is used as a global resource. And we have seen the similar scenario uh, also in the entanglement-based QKD. There, we use entanglement and classical communication to correlate to, in order to establish a correlated secret key between Alice and Bob. That was the E91 protocol. In clock synchronization of qubits, we are using the global correlations that are present in a maximally entangled state in order to establish a global time frame and correlate these two qubit clocks together, therefore synchronizing them. And quantum networks are instrumental in uh, distributing bipartite entanglement, therefore allowing the various nodes in the network to synchronize their clocks and establish a global, uh, global time frame.